Residential Sales Comparison and Income Approaches, page 74. For example, in the scatter diagram below, We see the relationship of the gross living area of the data sets and the contributory value of the fourth bedroom. As the total gross living area of the data increases, so does the contributory value of the fourth bedroom. Here's your gross living area. You got 1,800 square feet up to 2,400 square feet. And then uh, along the length, you have the contributory value. At uh, your beginning point, you have $1,500 for 1,800 square feet. You go down the line, you have $1,800 for 2,000 square feet, $2,100 for 2,200 square feet, and $2,250 for 2,300 square feet because it lands right in between, damn near in between those. When the data is viewed two-dimensionally, as in this example, where the subject best fits within this data becomes obvious. Regression analysis and graphic analysis are discussed further in the Statistics, Modeling, and Finance course. Data collection and storage. Before going further with the discussion of data analysis and application, it is important to look at where the appraiser's data is coming from and how the appraiser treats this data. Comparable sales and listing data can come from a variety of sources. Most frequently, the appraiser subscribes to multiple listing services as well as other independent services that supply information on properties currently available and those that have sold or expired without selling. The availability of these services depends on the particular area of the assignment. The expectation for the sources to which an appraiser avails themselves is judged by what the appraiser peers would use in a similar assignment. Obtaining and storing comparable data. One of the appraiser's best sources of relevant data comes from the appraiser's own files of past assignments. When an appraiser performs an appraisal where the subject of the assignment is part of a sale transaction, the subject's information is most often stored by the appraiser for potential use as comparable data in future assignments. Most residential appraisal computer software allows the appraiser to store not only the subject data, but also new comparable data as it is identified and verified into a comparable database for future reference and use. Most of the technology available provides flexibility to the appraiser to sort the data by date of sale, sale price, location, style, or other physical characteristics. Extra note, any greenhorn appraiser can burn hours collecting data. Page 81, well, as other information sources will report the closing date of a transaction, but provide no information regarding the date of the agreement. When an appraiser cannot determine the date of the agreement, whether or not it is an issue would depend on market condition trends. Good judgment as well as competency in the particular market is necessary on the part of the appraiser. Has there been a long period of consistent market behavior and conditions using the closing date as the date of sale? In many residential appraisal assignments, the time period between agreement and closing of a transaction could be minimal and little change may have occurred. However, if the market has demonstrated 
volatility, it is possible that the market conditions at the time of the agreement and on the date of the closing were different. Therefore, in this case, knowledge of when the sale agreement was made between the parties to the transaction is vital to the appraiser's analysis. An adjustment for market conditions can be quantified by analyzing comparable sales data that have a resale history. Consider the following example. For example, An appraiser has located a comparable sale within the subject market that sold in recent days for $315,000. The same property sold three years ago for $290,000. Both transactions were affirmed to be arm's length and there were no significant physical changes in the property during that period. To calculate the market change, the appraiser must recognize the amount of, in this case, appreciation, $25,000. For application in the sales comparison approach, the amount of appreciation is interpreted as a percent. To calculate this, the appraiser must divide the amount appreciated by the amount it appreciated from so you have the $25,000 that was the appreciation divide that amount by $290,000 that equals 0 0.08621 or 8.62 percent and you got that percent by moving the decimal over two places to the right. From the 0 0.086, you move it one, two, and that gives you 8.62%. Since this change was over a three-year period, the change per month is figured as follows. You take your 0 0.86. 08621 divide that by 36 months that equals 0 0.002395 or you move the decimal over two spots to the right 0 0.2395 percent per month illustrating this pattern on a graph Using a straight line, it looks like this. It shows your prices on the left going up 300000 all the way to 350000 Your subject started at $290,000 right there. And then uh, it goes, goes up to $315,000. Um, as can be seen, the adjustment could be safely applied to comparable data if the appreciation was consistent. And extra notes, the 8.62% was a rate. That's your rate right there. Also, you have IRV, which stands for Income Over Rate and Value. Your income was $25,000. Your value was $290,000. You were solving for your rate. You took your income, which was $25,000, and you divided it by the $290,000, which was your value. That kicked you out your 0 0.08621, moving the decimals to 8.62%, solved you for your your rate. That's what Irv is.